Caitlin Martin and Nicole Pinker. Um, why don't we all in introduce uh, Charles, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hey, I'm Charles Lang. And your workshop is going to be on learning analytics in informal spaces. I'm not a research person myself, but I know a lot of learning does happen in after-school programs and maker spaces and, and other non-classroom settings. And, and I'm assuming from the name of your workshop that you're getting into, well, how, how do we measure how learning is happening? So tell us your ideas for the workshop. Let me uh, just start by saying for the last 12 years, DYN has worked in the informal learning space, and we've always wanted to have access to information and data that can help improve our practice. And we've just decided recently as our work has expanded from just one single, you know, like a small program to working with organizations across the city, that now is the opportunity to really think about the role of data analytics because there's patterns in how kids participate that are just invisible in ways that they aren't invisible in formal education. And so working with Caitlin and with our team here, we said, well, let's just bite the bullet. And so for the last couple of years, we've been creating this data and then wanting to have a community of people to engage in conversations about how does learning in informal places look different than formal spaces. But in order to have that conversation, you need more and more organizations who have access to that type of data. We also have been, as kids are on systems, and we're working mostly in face-to-face, -face, but there's always an online component. And this is true in a variety of different places, like the Scratch online community is very popular and active. There's DIY.org. So we know there's more of these informal spaces. And we also know that every time a click happens, there's some sort of log data behind it. And so one of our big questions was, wow, we have all this amazing data, but how do we make sense of it for ourselves, but also to hopefully feed back to the educators that are in these spaces, or the kids themselves, or the parents, in ways we can say something about. And one thing that we found have found very interesting is that even when we're working with the same online platform, depending on where it's being used, success is measured differently. <laughs> so in some places, the number of productive, creative things the kid submits is sort of a measure of success. But in some place else, the same tool can be used a completely different way and still look very successful for, for learning around collaboration or discourse. And so that's something we're interested in, too, is how do you catch, use this data to say something that mm -hmm. people can sort of envision their own measures of success? Because it's unlike school. It's not just a grade level or a metric of have you completed something or not. Mm -hmm. Ross? Charles, do you want to jump in? Uh, sure. They've, uh, I mean, they've covered it uh, pretty well. I mean, I, what really interests me is that we have all these new metrics that may allow us to redefine what education is about and uh, maybe kind of redefine what's valuable in informal spaces as well as formal spaces. So maybe there are things in the informal spaces that are doing more good for students than what they're getting within, the, within schools or, or other more formal and I think to and I think with that is first is I think this is the beginning of multiple conversations and the beginning of creating a community of people who know who to turn to and to say, well, how are you thinking about answering these? What are the key? Even how should we be capturing data? Um, what do we? How do we think about how you link data to formal, informal, and, and, and informal? What is the data visualizations? How do you share data out with schools? What are the privacy? There's all kinds of. Uh, questions that I think each of us who are sort of doing these in silos are making up our own solutions and our own answers and because this is a new space um, and let me say this because most tools particularly if you're talking about online data are uh, most organ people are using commercial platforms where you actually don't really get access to that information so you don't your these decisions and questions are already shaped for you because they're already produced a report in terms of how they're going to give it back to you. So the ability to say, hey, these are tools where we can have some voice in shaping collectively how we want to represent learning at the individual level, at the site level, at the community level, um, to inform and improve practice, how to connect to connected learning. Should there be a way, even a, a toolkit around this is what, this is in order to help push the connected learning um, movement forward, 
how do we can we agree to collect data in certain ways and share it so I just think we're at the beginning of a conversation and we want to come in here with some case examples to sort of ignite conversation but not with and here's how you do it more so hey how do we work together to figure out what this should be and share challenges because we've certainly run into it's hard it's really hard it's a lot of data it's overwhelming and especially for those of us who are working in face-to-face -face and are mm -hmm. trying to collect qualitative data and make sure this data the patterns that we're seeing represent sort of the heart of what we know when we work with mentors or kids mm -hmm. it's messy and it's hard and so we really thought this would be a nice opportunity to bring a bunch of people together that are facing similar questions or who have a data set they haven't even started to explore but have questions about that data mm -hmm. so it, it sounds to me like you're you're beginning to collect data and you're beginning to think about how do you how do you use that that data and you're inviting others to get in on this early so that uh, you can have a community approach to it. Do you have any quick examples of data that you've collected that you oh, yeah. uh, find valuable? That oh, you yeah. Share? yeah, yeah. Um, so we have a, a paper upcoming in the um, Journal of Learning Analytics where we've really tried to do this idea of, okay, we're collecting log data, what does it mean? Um, and, and tie it to face-to-face -face cases from the classroom. So using DYN's iRemix platform, we've tried to uh, extract act user log actions and really looked at both the educator and the student actions and tried to look at them in terms of 21st century learning capacities or activities particularly self-directed, evidence mm -hmm. of self-directed learning activities, evidence of social learning activities, and evidence mm -hmm. of creative production activities. And that's sort of a framework that we're working with. Um, we also have a set of adult learning support roles. So what are log what does it look like bro brokering? If you say, hey, we're reading brokering is a, 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 a new it's uh, another buzz. workshop. It's an, it's a, You're promoting yeah, another workshop. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a concept that everyone's trying to understand, but what does that look like? It's easy to say, go broker, be a broker. But when you say, well, how do I broker inside of these online platforms? What do I do? How do I understand that if I'm brokering in a one-to-one -one interaction with a kid online versus, oh, to the whole class? And there's so many different ways in which, you know, if you understand the affordances of the technologies and you understand just how do you broker, that you can think differentially of how to do this and how do we look at the data or how do we look at you know like how do we if Howard if we had access to your log data because you're a phenomenal uh, facilitator what would we see how would we see you facilitating your classes differently than someone else who isn't right and then what can we learn and how do we then come up with some design principles with regards to that another I just want to say another form of data which is completely different because this is looking at more the clicks at the individual interaction is we have access to a, a citywide data set in Chicago called the Chicago City of Learning where we look at what are kids looking for programs. We're talking about formal learning. We normally only know when kids show up. So how do we begin to know what kids want to do and how do you then map that to what's available so you can begin to see what the learning deserts are. Does it differ across age range and do you see differences in terms of do kids do their searches and things like that change over time? So that's a tremendous data set, but again, you need a framework. You need some shared frameworks of how to understand it uh, to begin to add some uh, value out of it. And what I think we're inviting for this workshop we're holding, we really think it could be of use to practitioners, um, but also designers. So we really try to think about when we see what kids are doing or not, our intention of the platform and how to build in more features for adults and kids so that we see more of those activities that we think are some metric of learning or engagement or persistence mm -hmm. in these activities. So I think what we're envisioning, it will change depending on who we sort of attract to this workshop. Hopefully we'll reflect mm -hmm. what people want to do. Mm -hmm. um, but we'd really like to have representatives from different areas participate. And we're hopefully going to share an anonymized data set from some of our work, and we'd love to hear what other people are doing, but we'd also love to collectively kind of double down and work with one data set and see mm -hmm. what we can come out of it using a couple tools. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's a, a, a great description of what it is you plan to do. I, I see 
um, some affirmative nodding from you, Charles. Is there anything you want to add uh, to this? Uh, the only the only thing I would add is that really all this stuff is just getting off the ground. It's a really great time to get involved because I mean everyone is kind of at the same level because it, no one knows exactly what's going to happen. It's a, it's it's, it, it's okay, like, great. There's there's your your call to action. Let's go figure out what's going to happen. Pretty so, much. Thank you all for your time, and I'm looking forward. Oh, are you going to give us your uh your data your log data of you and your uh. <laughs> I think that would be a phenomenal data set to understand. Let's, oh, that would be interesting. Next time I teach an online course, let's talk about that. All right. All right. See you all. Thank Bye -bye. you.